this is Sean with Gate City Foundation Drainage. I'm on a job this morning in Summerfield. So take a look at what we got going on. We've got this driveway that slopes way, way down. You got the whole road sloping down. You've got a, a drainage ditch here. You've also got a drainage ditch over here. And what we've got going on here is this really ugly drainage ditch here. So let's just take a quick walk down here. So the homeowner doesn't like the way this looks and wants us to fix it. The other thing we've got going on here is the little creek right here is just kind of washing out the property owner's land right here. So the water comes down, slams into this bank, shoots over, and then it's eroding right here. So along with doing that ditch, I'm going to get in this creek and try to move some of this dirt around a little bit. The riprap that comes out of that drainage ditch, I'm going to use to try to armor the bank right there. So take a look at this drainage ditch. Now you've seen me do riprap channels before. And a riprap channel like we have here is good because it's open and it continues to accept water. But in this case, I'm okay with covering this all up and doing a culvert. The reason is because we've got high sides on both sides of this, but it's not like a long continuous slope. So there shouldn't be a whole huge amount of water going into this open ditch. According to the, to the homeowner, most of the water comes rushing through these two right here. So if we put our inlet right here somewhere, we should be able to dig all this riprap out and get some culvert in here. So that's what we're working on today. And I've got my big dump truck here with a few sticks of this 20 inch culvert and I've got my big excavator here. And there's our inlet and Ronald's on the way. So we should be able to get going pretty good today on this job.
According to the homeowner, this lower area here was the in the worst shape. They have been dealing with this ugly looking riprap and channel for quite a while. And they had some larger rocks brought in to try to stabilize it a little bit, try to slow the water down. But this has been, I guess, progressively getting worse and worse and worse. And so they added this netting in here to try to stabilize the bank. And that helped out a little bit, but it still was continuing to deteriorate. So they had these larger riprap rocks brought in too. And we're going to be repurposing those elsewhere on the property and trying to make this new culvert look a little better. So you'll see that coming up toward the end of the video. And so this has been going on for quite a while and the homeowners were really happy to get this addressed and get their yard looking a lot better. We're about ready to get our second piece in here, but if you follow that straight line right there, we're kind of coming into this bank right here. So I want to get some of this pulled out of here. Straighten that up a little bit. Good! Things are looking pretty good. I wanted to show you where we're at with this so far. Ronald's been busting his butt getting this pipe bedded. So that's looking really good. We're down to our last piece in here. So he's working on that. And so we're gonna have a bunch of water coming screaming through this pipe, going really fast. So I've been looking at this for a minute and get my footing here what I think I want to do is I think I want to dig this out and replace it with with rock so we got tons and tons of rocks we're gonna have to figure out I think we're gonna have some extra but that's what I'm gonna work on right now is getting this dug out get this filled with rocks and that will slow the water down before it hits the main channel and so you wouldn't want it you wouldn't want to end the pipe like right here and just have it like shooting water out so we're going to try to get some rock in here absorb some of that energy 
So let me take a couple scoops out of here and see how we do. We're working on this outfall, trying to get it to look pretty good. So I wanted you to take a look. And then I'm about to get started in here. So let's take a walk over here. So a lot of this riprap, I want to bring in and pack it against that bank right there because that's what's eroding. I want to take this and try to move it or do something with it and I want to straighten out this channel. So where this is coming around and meandering, I want to try to cut this bank off right here and get it straightened out a little bit better. So we're going to see how we do. Have you cut it down a little bit to ease it in like we were talking about? How far back? Just whatever looks good. Well, well here, here, I mean, and you want general swept into that? Yeah, I think so. We need to come back a couple, two or three feet, a couple feet then. Maybe into here somewhere. Can you save that rock and put it back when you're done? It is the next day and I've got my skid steer here as well. And I also received permission to fly the drone in this airspace. So I've got some drone footage coming up.
right into position. If it'll roll. It'll roll. Don't get any mud on it. Well, she stopped. That's what we need to think. Yeah. I think it'll make it. While I was digging the channel, I saved a few of the rocks that I thought might look good here on the inlet side of our new culvert. And Ronald and I here are just trying to test fit them and rearrange them and make them look good. So the overall goal here on the inlet is to make this look really nice. We are over here at this pile of dirt. And what happened here is the neighbor, I guess, was installing a pool and the dump truck driver drop the dirt here for him but when they backed up they broke a, an internet line and the internet line is for that house over there so that was about two months ago they came and fixed it so when I was digging through here I was making sure not to be digging under the ground just kind of skimming and we found this cable here and I thought this was just a, a cable in the dirt but it turns out that they had, I guess, run a temporary line and hadn't buried it at all. So this guy's now out of service again. So I wanted to see what you all thought. Who's, whose fault is it here? The dump truck driver for dumping the dirt right next to a communication pedestal? This, this is my, my customer's property and their internet over there is running across it. Or is it our fault? What do you all think? Anytime we hit a communication or any kind of a utility line, one of the things I like to do as a contractor is I like to be as helpful as I can for the utility coming out to repair it. And so the dump truck driver pretty much dumped his load of, of dirt right on top of this communication pedestal. And so once we realized we broke the line, Ronald and I are over here trying to get this pedestal unburied basically. So we're trying to get this loose dirt out of here so that when AT&T does show up, they can fix it a lot more easily and not have to dig a bunch of stuff out. So that's what we're working on here. We needed just a little bit more dirt, so I brought some in. So I'm gonna dump it right here where it's already all messed up. We are just about out of dirt, so we need to hand shovel this in here and try to get this cleaned up a little bit better. But here's the temporary line the cable guy ran. So he ran it right here, and then he took it around our work area. We kind of feathered this out as best we could. It's real wet in here. And he was nice enough too to put some flags on it for us. So the neighbor over here is back up and running. 
This is our inlet. Ronald just got a bunch of rocks dug out of the creek and brought up here, hauled all the way up the hill. So this is looking pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I think we need a few more on the other side, maybe. Kind of even it out a little bit? Yeah. Maybe some small ones like you got here? Yeah. All right, I'm okay with that. I finished up the skid steer work and I'm back out here on the excavator now and so my plan was to get all these rocks into the channel here into the creek with the skid steer and then get the excavator in here to try to place them on the far side of the bank there across from me and try to armor that a little bit so I've got a lot of dirt mixed in here so I'm trying to get some of these bigger rocks out of here and sort it out through the dirt. I'm down here in the creek and I tried to straighten out this thalweg a little bit, but I'm not sure how well I did. There's a bunch of huge rocks underneath that dirt. So that's not just a pile of dirt right there. I dug into this bank until I started hitting roots from that sycamore tree. And so I just tried to straighten this out just a little bit and I'm hoping that's gonna stop that. I'm, I'm not really sure though. We may have to bring in some more rock, but this was, this was kind of part of the job, you know, the homeowner said do the best you can with this little machine and however good we get it is what we get, but this is what they were really, really looking for. So we got this, this is our outfall here, it's looking pretty good, and then the swale, we kind of made that into a little bit of a swale, so I'll talk more about that later.
we just finished with our seating and strawing. Everything looks really, really good. And this thing is actually flowing. They said this will flow if they haven't had rain for weeks. It just stays wet. We're right at the bottom of the hill everywhere. And so look at that. We are finished with this job. So I'm just getting cleaned up up here. The homeowners are out there doing some cleaning up as well. And I came back to get the mini bobcat. So I can't wait to get back out here when it's raining. I'm back out here. It's been probably a couple weeks at least. So I wanted to check on this in the rain and see how we did. So you got quite a bit of water coming out of here and this is just a weird it's a weird system like I guess the water comes down and around and then it flows across here and it's also coming off the street a little bit here but anyway so this is working pretty well that's pretty much what we were hoping would happen let's go take a look at the outfall So the other thing I wanted to talk about here was the appropriateness of a swale versus a culvert. So let's get to that in a minute. So this is looking pretty good. So yeah, look at that. It looks like our culvert got deformed a little bit. But I'm not too worried about that. So the idea here was you have a nice obstruction-free discharge and then you start running into the riprap and that's going to slow the water down. And so you can see what's going on over there. And so we also straightened out the fall wag just a little bit. And in case you're wondering, there's a bunch of big rocks underneath all that dirt. So I didn't really have a great solution for that besides hoping the, the dirt would settle into the rock. So yeah, this is doing pretty good. So, <clears throat> I wanted to take a look at the lay of the land here. So, changing a swale into a culvert. Basically, if we were, if this was all uphill and this thing was like collecting water the whole way, you would not want to turn it into a culvert. And the fact that we had a point water source coming into our swale means that we could go into a culvert and we kind of still have a swale here but it's not not really huge it's not doing a whole lot so we are collecting a little bit of water here and i was trying to kind of aim it that way instead of aiming it across here so we may have to revisit that and see how it does but yeah this is working out pretty well and the homeowners are really Happy to have that, that ugly, riprap filled ditch running along their property. They're also really happy with how this turned out and the appearance of it. So Ronald did a lot of work on this and we, we set our big rocks up there. This was a pretty interesting project and a fairly unique situation where we were able to convert a riprap channel into a covered culvert and make things look a lot better. So like I mentioned in the video, you, you really want to be careful if you're changing a, an open riprap channel like that because if the channel is continually accepting water, you would not want to turn that into a culvert with a swale on top. One of the reasons we were able to do that in this situation is because the the water that was coming down the riprap channel was coming from a, a culvert itself. So if you have water coming out of a culvert, it can go into a culvert. As long as you're not at the bottom of a hill and the whole channel is accepting more water. A couple other things. We worked 
a little bit with the HOA out there. We were using their common property, and so we made sure to get that all cleaned back up and reseeded and strawed when we were finished. So the homeowner was good with that. And then the cable situation that we had. So obviously, when you're trying to, to fix a broken cable like that, it's just a bad situation for whoever lost their internet. And so I asked the question of whose fault was it? My answer to that is, I don't, I don't know that it's really anybody's fault. And if, if you're not trying to place the blame and you're trying to solve the problem, I think that helps matters out quite a bit. So we always try to work with the utility when they come out to try to fix it. And I tried to smooth things over with the neighbor, you know, tried to get things up and running as fast as possible for him. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was the homeowner in this situation. The homeowner was really, really helpful. And that area where we had the dirt pile, it was really muddy there. And there was a bunch of cables running through there. So I wasn't able to use the power rake. And so the homeowner was willing to rake that all out once it dried. So that was very helpful. And we left a bag of seed and a couple bales of straw for him to finish off the finished grading. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been a really cool one. Thanks for watching.